there, everybody. Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Yeah, I know it's late. Sometimes life gets away from you and you just do the best you can. So today we're going to do day 14 of the Advent Ornament Challenge. If you're not on the East Coast, then it's still technically day 14. And we're going to do letters to Santa. So let's begin by sketching. So if your top is right here, you're going to create a diagonal line that kind of right through the middle of it with your pencil. Keep it light. And then you're going to do kind of a line across here on the bottom and then a little line here. And that line, these little points are going to help be our guides. So from here, I'm going to say I want my letter to be because we want it to take up like a good portion of the ornament. I sketched this out a few times and I kept making the ornament or the, the envelope too small. And I just looked, it doesn't look right. So then another line across the middle. So we'll take these up here and kind of create your rectangle, and then we'll meet that point right up there. Oops. And if it's wonky, it's okay. This is kind of whimsical, so we can get away with wonky. And then from the inside, we'll draw another little rectangle that kind of comes up like so. And we want to give it a little, a little bit of wiggle room on either side inside that, that rect, the bigger rectangle, the envelope, right? So then from here, I'm going to take a curved slightly curved line from the edge of each of these to meet the center. And now I've kind of formed the envelope and the letters, and then I need to do a little bit of erasing. This time I'm going to remember to erase, unlike some of the other days. And so you erase the envelope tabs that are overlapping the outer portion of the little letter. And then we bring the letter legs, or the letter parts down a little bit. And then I'll maybe just kind of release and get rid of some of these little extra sketchy bits. The less it's there, the less we have to work to cover up, right? Okay, so I feel like we kind of have like a, a good sense of, of what we have there. Um, let's go ahead and, all right, so the colors we're using today are white, black, true red, uh, desert turquoise. That's a sort of a, a smoky blue in a, turquoise in its own way. Sour apple, and it's just like a half of a half of a pinch. And then we have cloudless if you want. If you don't have a light, light blue, you can always mix your own just by significantly um, diluting down the blue. Just add a whole lot of white. Okay, so we will begin with the desert turquoise. We're just going to get the outside here, get it first base coat. We're going to go all around. This is the background, right? get around and I'm using kind of a small flat brush. I don't know if it's an eighth of an inch. I think it's less than a quarter of an inch. And it's okay if your paint goes on a little bit gloppy, even a little streaky. We're going to add a delicate um, pattern to this just so it's not totally like boring. But we're not going to have it be like a really bold pattern. Trust me, I tried a really bold pattern and like the envelope and the, the cuteness of the envelope got completely lost. So I'm trying to keep it simple here. So filling that out like so. And this is letters to Santa. I think this would really be fun on a larger canvas too. We're working small and fast. I'm so excited, you guys. I finally figured out the whole, like, winter vacation schedule. I realize we're, it's almost that time. But, you know, when you've got kids going here and going there and other family members needing stuff and plans changing and all that stuff, I am going to take the week between Christmas and New Year's off. Really, really need that downtime. How about you guys? You holding up okay during all these holidays? Okay, so there we got it. We've got the basic kind of set up there. Now I'm going to add just a teachy touchy touch of that blue right in here, kind of in the in the base where it's made, there's maybe a little bit of shadow. And I didn't bother grabbing more. I'm just kind of getting whatever paint happens to be on my brush there. Now I'm going to offload this on my floater which is gone so just on a piece of scratch paper get rid of the excess blue no need to rinse it off in fact you know what yeah okay so i'm going to grab some white 
I could grab the cloudless as well, but I think I'm going to do just fine with the white. I'm going to kind of scrub it over that little part that I just did blue and then kind of just fill out the letter. Now, some of the blue from your brush should be coming out in that white. And we want that. We're not making an exactly white letter. However, this is the first coat. We're going to add a little bit more on top of this in a second, but we just want kind of a, a tint. Makes it a little more lively than just straight, boring, plain white. All right. So you can see that there's a little bit of a shadow kind of in this zone. In fact, if I scrub some of that white up, then that, that shadow kind of persists a bit more. And now it looks like, you know, the envelope is actually forming a shadow on top of the letter. So from here, I'm going to grab a little bit more white, just straight white on my brush. And I'm going to kind of scrub it kind of through the center from the top down and be a little sloppy about it, keeping it inside, of course, the body of the letter. Um, but we kind of want to fade. We want it to just kind of feel like there's some light going on it. And here we go. Okay. And I'm kind of staying inside the edges. And while it looks a little funky now, it'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to offload the excess. Stand on camera. Yeah. So I'm going to offload the excess paint for this guy. And then I'll actually give this, this brush a little rinse and give it a second to kind of get some of the paint off. Oh, I have this light way down low. What was I thinking? Does that help? Maybe. Maybe not. All right. Squirrel. Let's get a smaller round brush. I'm going to go with one of our, our liner brushes. It's really tiny. Ha! Holly, yes, you did. You caught me. So from here, I have some cloudless and I have, sorry, wait, wait, here we go. Well, I have the cloudless and I have the desert turquoise. Um, this isn't really great for mixing and I think it's going to ruin my brush. So I'm going to take a wrecked brush and do the mixing instead. I'm going to take the cloudless. But again, if you don't have cloudless, you could just add a tiny bit of white. But I want something in between this light blue and this desert turquoise. So I'm going to make just a little bit more. I feel like the cloudless is kind of a, a shortcut. My original, my original attempt... I ended up doing cloudless design and it was too light. So then I did a wash and I was like, all right, that's too complicated. Let's just mix the right color in the first place. So I'm trying to get, you know, slightly different, but not so, but not like starkly different, if that makes sense. So you're looking for a little bit of subtlety. So go ahead and rinse your mixing brush. And again, you just really can't, you know, get away with mixing with your skinny brush, not if you want it to last. This one is already giving up the ghost a bit. So I'm using that that sort of medium turquoise color that we just mixed. And I'm gonna just kind of create a couple of gentle spirals. And you notice that they kind of, they don't pop out too much. They're not loud and crazy and like cabamo. They're sort of like, oh, hey, almost like a calico, you know, fabric print, you know, it just kind of, it's tone on tone that kind of happens. And you're just going to do a series of circles and you're going to, or spirals. You're going to fill up the whole zone, everything kind of around the letter area. And then, you know, a few that kind of, oh, this guy's getting split. I'm not ready to give you a brush. Funny, I wanted to do a letter with like a stamp on it, but then but then I couldn't do like a letter that said Dear Santa. And I was like, I want to do the front and I want to do the back, but you can't do the front and the back at the same time. Everybody, anybody else ever get a little bit like hyper little ADHD? <laughs> you're like, oh, and we do this and we do this, and oh my gosh. And then you're like, all right, simplify, simplify. I overthink things a lot, a lot, a lot. How about you? There we go. So, see. You know, so some of these end up being almost like concentric circles. And again, it's, it's kind of subtle. I mean, you can see it, but it's not like in your face. Trust me. I tried this with like polka dots, like big, bold polka dots. And I was like, asked my daughter, hey, what do you think? I'm, it's not quite right. She's like, oh, mom. All right. The teenager has, 
has spoken. <laughs> Holly says, hyper distracted? Never. I know. I know. Guilty. But, you know, I might not be the only one, right? That's what I love about being an artist. You can kind of get away with being a little bit squirrel. It doesn't always work in the in, in, in normal business. And again, just kind of filling that background space up. It adds a little bit of interest, kind of keeps it fun, a little bit of whimsy, almost like it's a dream-like magical state. You're swirling some magic. That's what we're doing. It's Santa's magic. So this brush here is kind of giving up the ghost. I don't know if I just didn't wash it properly one day or something, but it's kind of like it's had it with me. So after these swirls, I might kind of set it aside and keep going. So we've kind of got our, our little letter in place. Can offload the brush and rinse it because, you know, I'm still going to try and salvage a little bit if I can, you know. We never give up around here. Okay, oops. And I'm also going to pull out my little small square brush. Filbert. It's not a filbert, is it? It's a flat brush, but it's a really small one. Um, and we will grab some red. What did I just drop? Oh, was it cold? So as I get into the red, I'm going to just kind of use, kind of work it into the bristles. And what that does is it starts to flatten and form the bristles of that brush so that it, well, behaves. Because I'm going to want to use this now to create like a really solid, a really clean edge right here. We're making a red envelope. Okay, so 1990s question. Anybody remember the service red, the red envelope was like this like internet startup in Silicon Valley or I mean, it wasn't there, but it was this cool startup where like if you wanted to send a gift to someone and I mean, I guess it wasn't really that innovative, but there was something just like really classy about it. Anyway. I'm not sure I ever bought anything because I was like, wow, all their stuff is so cool. And oh my gosh, it's so expensive. Oh, you do? You remember the red envelope too, Holly? Okay, I'm not alone. I mean, it was almost, you know, turn of the century, just pre-Y2K. Man, those that was an interesting time. Like I wasn't old enough to have made any money in all the dot-com, dot-bomb, <coughs> boom and bust. But I was front and center as a nobody watching it and going to all the IPO parties, like all of them. Like there were internet startups all over San Francisco. I had a friend who was like, would like make a schedule and send it out to all his buddies of like all like the industry parties every single night. So we would always go to one of those like networking events. And, and honestly, nothing ever came of it because I didn't have a clue how to network. But it still was kind of fun to, to show up and socialize and I don't know. Yeah, it was it was a weird time. All right. So again, we're just kind of filling in. We're just filling in the, the red of the envelope and we're getting all of it red to start with inside and outside and then we'll add some variation in a second we just want that base coat as always you all sick of hearing me say blah 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 base coat blah 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 base coat well but they work they work oh look at that that's a really bright happy red i almost don't want to mess with it but i need to okay so we have all that we still have plenty of red on our brush um I'm going to just dip it right into the white, kind of pull out just a little bit and maybe kind of scrub it a little because I want some of that red to kind of show up in that. And while the paint is wet, I'm going to kind of come in here and just start to drag some of that red on the inside. Notice I'm leaving. Can you tell? Can you see that there? I'm kind of leaving the borders. Um, the borders red and I'm just using kind of the slightly faded faded red inside the envelope it or inside the um inside the borders so there's a little bit of that just plain pure red going on so here I'll kind of enhance that a little with a 
so you guys can make that out better. I'm gonna go extra. Me extra? No. Okay. So now you should have like the deeper red inside and then the slightly brighter red on the outside. And Holly says, trust the process. Exactly. See, she's been listening. She understood the assignment. Anybody else like too much TikTok, too many reels? Maybe. Okay, where's my reference? Wow. I mean, I can figure this out, but sometimes you have a reference and it's right here. Here we go. Okay. So from here, I'm going to actually see if I can... Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this guy and move on to move on to a liner brush. So here we have a nice, long, skinny liner brush. Let's start with some white. So I'm just going to kind of come right on into my white, and I'm going to give that thing a little twist, and that just helps keep the bristles together. And let's add a little kind of highlighty bitsy boos right along here. Just kind of pop and accentuate. So keep it loose. This is not exact. Just kind of saying, hey. And I think I want to kind of keep going with that there. So make it really look like a folded piece. Because, you know, envelopes are so cool. It's like, it's like a square or some similar shaped piece of paper that's been folded at all these angles to create the perfect thing to, to plop a, to plop a letter in. So now we've got kind of the, the little white highlights, which, which help. I might add a little white, a little white kind of tighten up the edges. We're going to come in with some black as well, but the black tends to be a little bit looser. So a little tightening with the white really is nice because it'll show. I'm just focusing on the edges and it's a little bit brighter than the rest of the letter and it's, it looks cool. So we're just going to go with it. It can be a little sketchy because this is supposed to be, you know, fun stylized, only a little bit realistic, right? You can kind of see like those, those gentle um, swirls. They're there, but they're not overpowering, which is kind of exactly what we we're going for here. Whoops. Sorry. Bump the camera stand. Rinse that brush. All right, look at that. It got all spewed, skewed and spewed when I rinsed it. So I'm just going to bring it into a paper towel and kind of twist it and try to try to bring it all back together or, you know, stick it in my mouth and lick it because that is what I do, unfortunately. Let's go with some black while we're here. Twisting into the black. I love the extra long liners. I feel like I have way better control. So we're going to test our line just by doing the edge of the letter. And if you feel like your, your, your paint line isn't lasting long enough, you can always add a touch of water. In fact, I'm going to kind of pop in here and grab a little bit of water and then just kind of pull a little touch of the, the paint out over here. So you're making it almost like an acrylic based ink, so to speak. It's going to be a little thinner, so it will it will go on smoother. Should be able to get a slightly longer line. Black is one of the only colors that that is that trick is easy to get away with. Every other color, it starts to fade, but black you kind of don't really notice if there's any fading going on. So we're going to get a good outline on all of this because again we're kind of going whimsical, keeping it fun. all the way out to those edges with that and then sometimes you can even do like a slight little like kind of curve this is a tiny curve right there at that corner right there it's almost hard to see and that brings it back and then we'll come from here yeah. this is not the most realistic looking envelope it's like a very steep top but you know what it's cute so i don't care little curve there so that little curve just popping it out a smidge it just makes it look like it's a folded item which it is helps add that visual sense of depth okay now that we got that 
hold up the rest of the envelope. Just kind of coming to the outside. And that's going to be kind of where like that red and that desert turquoise meet. And it's already creating a little bit of a shadowy tone. So we're just gently accentuating it a bit with, with their skinny brush. Okay, now we're going to write. Let me give it a quick blast. Where to put it? Goodness me. You know, it's like in my studio, it's like I'm always moving things around. So I'm like burying and unburying and burying and unburying. And But I could find it if I followed the cord. I'm not going to. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. And then kind of, again, bring it out to just kind of have that slightly inky. It's a little bit more fluid, so it'll move a little bit more smoothly on the brush on the on the surface. All right, so here we go. We're going to do some lettering, and it's not going to be pretty. It's going to look like a kid wrote it because that's about all I got. D. Now I'm going to break the E up. I'm going to kind of do like so from the top and from there. If you have better brush control. Feel free to not break it up as much. Now do the A and the R. Boop. All right. So it totally looks like Woody wrote on that, or what's his name? Andy wrote on, wrote this letter after writing on Woody's shoe. Let's see. Um, Holly says, can I move the tray a little further in when I do that? It's blocked by my, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, can you, is it better now, Holly? Okay, so now we're gonna do the Santa. I apologize, my hand is totally gonna be in the way. Let's, go, let's see if I can angle it out. I'm just gonna kind of come around and loop. And since I wanna do that S and a full swoop, come on, whoa, yes. That's my only fancy letter right there. It was a little too fancy. Now we'll just write the rest of it. Small A N. Oop. T A. So as you're constructing your lettering. Don't feel like you have to do it standard like you would with cursive. You're allowed to kind of pick it up. Think of it as shapes, kind of the way we break down our other stuff in shapes. It's going to make this easier. All right, now here we go. We're going to write the letter. Zig, zig, zag, a jig, a jig, jig. Whoops. Yeah. All right, look at that. Wah, 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 wah. Just kind of squiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There we go. Yay. That part was so easy. <laughs> the only easy part. <laughs> okay. Offload your black. I think, let me just double check here. Yep. We are done with the black. In fact, we're, we're making pretty solid progress on this guy. But again, the goal of this is not to, whoops, it's not to create like a huge, insane effort masterpiece. It's to just do something fun every single day that you can be proud of and maybe even create like a family tradition of, I don't know, of an advent calendar. All right. So now I'm going to grab the Sour apple, sour apple. Trying to do my like Arnold accent here. Okay. I'm going to use a couple of cute little trees on this for, for, for giggles. So we'll do like almost like just a series of like upside down V's kind of connected. We're not going for masterpieces here. We're just going for some cute green on. red that maybe looks like a kid drew it on their envelope when they sent it to the North Pole. And maybe we'll just do one on this side. I don't know. Maybe make it go wider and bigger. I guess we can do anything we want if we, if we work at it. Yeah. So like, yeah, there we go. So now I kind of have like a shift in balance. It's, um, it's not exactly symmetrical, which is what we're aiming for. It's a little bit too much of the red is showing through on this, and I'm, it feels a little anemic in terms of the green. So I'm just coming over it with kind of a second coat to kind of 
yeah, to not let as much red show through because I really want that that green to pop out at you. And then I guess I'll just grab a little bit of black while I'm here. I didn't even bother rinsing or wiping my brush. If a little bit of the green mixes in, A-OK, -okay, but we're just going to give like little, little stumps there. That's maybe too much stump. So I'll just top on top of it with a little bit of, let's see. So here we go. Here's how we kind of less, lessen the impact of that. I'm going to take, bah, take my paper towel and just do a gentle kind of dab and lift. Dab and lift. Dab and lift. Sorry, my big old knuckles are in the way. Okay. And then I'll just kind of go over that with a little bit of green. But the black, so it's kind of like a, a line of green on top with a little bit of the black peeking through. And so that gives you that stump look without it being like these really loud black dots. And hey, look at that. We, we're done. I mean, you could keep going. You could embellish this further if you like. But we're really aiming for kind of simple, straightforward. I mean, if you wanted to go hog wild, you could even do like a small shadow under the under the envelope. I've done that on for other projects. I mean, we could be here all day working this thing, but I don't think we're going to call it good. But first, of course, we're going to use our gold to finish the top of this. All right, all these brushes every which way that need rinsing. And this guy's about out of paint, so I'm now at the point where I pretty much like take the lid off and just stick the brush right inside the bottle. There we go, a little gold here. Now I suppose we could glitterify the letter. Do you think we need some, some glitter magic on the letter? Okay, so Holly wrote, what did Holly say? Holly said, um, it's the paint tray with a water trick I can't see. Oh, 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 okay. So I just add a little bit of water to to the black and just kind of drag a little bit of the extra. Um, so I just, I, I got wet and I just sort of dragged water and paint over here to create like a little, a little inky bit here. And then this is the pure, the pure paint. So I try not to mix right in my, right in my, my pile of, in my pile of, of paint. I always try and just drag a little bit of paint off every time I want to mix. And, and mix it separate. I find that that just gives a like a little bit cleaner, better result. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this guy and bring it up here so you can see it. And let's see, lids, glitter, silver glitter. No, where is it? Where is it? I have glitter all over this house. And then when I want it, I can't find it. This is so typical, you guys. Oh, here we go, here's one. So I'm going to use the crystal, 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 like Royale with cheese. So it looks like glue, goes on like glue. And I think, oops, let's use a finger that's, yeah, that's perfectly dry. So I'm just going to grab a hunk of chunk of glitter here and add the glitter right on top of that letter. And I think I'm just going to do the actual paper, like just the, the letter itself, not the envelope or anything. And so while it looks like it's just kind of getting like grayed out and kind of getting lightened, all that will, again, I say this every time, but it, it's worth repeating and repeating and repeating. It will dry clear. Now what I can do for fun is I can right along the edges make my glitter paint extra thick so that it's really glittery right in those zones. It can't be quite this thick in the center because there will be so many glitter particles in there. Yeah, glitter particles. Then um, it will start to obscure the, the letter, the writing on that. So where the heck did I put my dryer? I had it just a second ago. Did it fall down? Oh, it did fall down. I just didn't see that. Maybe that's what that thunk was that I was like, what was that? What was that? Let's see if we can go over it quickly. I don't want to burn it because sometimes when you use these heat guns, if you're not careful, you can 
kind of cause it to bubble, especially when you chunk it on thick, which is maybe something we just did. Okay. So the edges are still pretty cloudy. Man, I feel like this whole thing would be happy with glitter. I don't think I'm going to go there, but ooh, it's so tempting because I have all this extra glitter. So we're not dry yet on the glitter, but I think you can start to see. Whoop, here we go. Oh, where am I going? Eh, there we go. Like bits of the glitter. I don't know. I'll get a better picture of this once it's actually dry, but at certain angles, there's just all kinds of shimmer. And let me see here. Can you see it? Kind of. Okay, online paint night, guys. I apparently am really horrible at trying to stay on camera. Of course, I'm like bending over and like tucking my head, trying to get it in there. All right. So if you want to do this, please go for it. You know, you can always tag your um, tag and then post it, show it off, tag it Advent Ornament Challenge, because I do try and do regular searches on Facebook so I can see everybody's work and comment and send you some love and get all excited about it. Um, yeah. So uh, anyways, it's been real. I love you guys and we'll see you tomorrow. I mean, on the 15th, you know, sometime in the day on the 15th for the next one. Oh, I'm adding just a pinch more green. I want it to pop. So if you feel like this green isn't quite right, you could always add a, like a brighter green or something. I don't know. I'm having second thoughts about it. I love the trees. Okay. Bye, guys. It's been fun. Love you. Uh-oh. Let's see. Where's the thing? There we go. Bye, Holly.